Hi, welcome back. I'm Chava, Clarity Coach and Practitioner of Chinese Medicine. And um, I'm here answering your questions. This is not actually the question that I planned on answering this week. Um, but I think that with the situation in the world at the moment, um, it's very, very relevant. And so I've decided to move it up, uh, move bump it up the list. And today I'm going to be answering the question or trying to answer the question, offering at least some perspectives on uh, this question, which is how can I turn off the voice in my head that downplays other people's problems? Um, so the person who asked this question says that sometimes or often in, in some some cases when they're hearing other people talk about even very serious problems in their life or maybe especially very serious problems other people are talking about sickness in the family losing a family member being afraid they're going to lose their job um the the person who asked the question hears a voice in their head um which seems to be trying to downplay these problems talking about um you know well i lost my you know i lost a family member and i got through it and i've been without work because of covid and i've had this thing happen to me which is so much worse than what happened to you um and the the voice seems um it seems out of place. The, the person says this doesn't feel like what they really think. It doesn't feel like these are their actual thoughts. They're certainly not the thoughts that they would want to have. Um, and yet this, this voice comes up and, and uh, the person who asks this question finds it very distressing um, to be dealing with this inner monologue, which feels so wrong. Um, and so I'm sure that there's a lot here that a psychologist uh, or people who specialize in how the brain functions could talk about, but from a more everyday behavior perspective, um, the simplest answer that I can come up with is that this voice is one of your one of one of the parts of yourself, one of your your um, little inner voices that is trying to protect you because it doesn't think that right now you have the emotional capability to deal with experiencing the, the complete impact of the issue that's being described. Um, so like I talked about in my video on grief and the grieving process, um, the, the psychological defense mechanisms uh, when we look at them through the lens of Chinese medicine, exist in large part to prevent uh, the, the person experiencing an emotional shock, experiencing a level of emotional overwhelm, which is too much for them to process and cope with at that specific point in time. And, um, and again, as we talked about in the grief video, we we look at the person at, at the entire person as um, as trying to protect the most essential core of ourselves, which is described in Chinese medicine as the heart um, or the spirit, the shin. Um, and this is the part of ourselves that's connected to heaven, that's connected to everyone else or everything else that has a heavenly spirit. It's the part of ourselves which um, experiences joy. It's the part of ourselves that experiences a feeling of connection to others. Um, and it's also described as the part of ourselves that has to be um, still or calm or regulated enough to actually be able to um, understand the information that's coming in through our senses if we're going to have a sane and healthy reaction to the world around us. Okay, so when people are behaving in ways that are inappropriate to their environment, um, it could be that they're receiving bad, inaccurate information through their senses. Um, 
or it could be that the, the part of themselves, the part of the brain, we would say in modern parlance, that is trying to process all of the information and come up with an appropriate response and then carry it out is, is too overwhelmed with emotion to be able to perform that task. And then the reactions that we're seeing will have more to do with a person's internal state than they have to do with the information that they're that they're receiving from the outside. Um, and our body has our body, our, our body, our mind, our spirit, our holistic oneness, this um, has all sorts of ways of trying to protect this, this calm spirit in our heart. Um, and one of the ways that it does that is by using the other emotions to try and um, try and block off the heart spirit um, from things that will be too overwhelming for us to process and could leave us in a state of confusion, of inability to function, of inability to react appropriately, um, or in very extreme cases, you know, trying to protect the actual heart from, uh, from a shock that could cause physical damage. Um, and so when we when we look at the the five emotions or the seven emotions or however they the uh they're described in whichever text you're using um but we see that each energy has an emotion associated with it so the emotion that's associated with fire um with the heavenly fire at least is is joy um is happiness at the at the various extremes and we're talking about depression or or mania um, the emotion associated with the earth energy is caring or nurturing or um, um, the desire to take care of things, um, the desire to care for things, to look after. Um, it's, not, it's not easily translated into English, um, but that's the emotion of the earth energy. At its ex unhealthy extremes, it can be carried into um, neglect or obsession. Um, the energy that's associated with the metal is the energy of, uh, the emotion that's associated with the metal is about, um, our ability to value things. So that can be looked at as gratitude or as grief, depending on whether we're valuing something that, that we have or something that we've lost. The emotion that's associated with the water energy is the fear. Um, and that can be, um, in, in a healthy person, that is a healthy fear that on the one hand stops us from diving out into traffic, but on the other hand pushes us to study for tests. Um, but it also has its extremes of paralyzing fear or, or manic fear. Um, and the emotion that's associated with the wood energy, the emotion of anger, where in its healthy balance, we're talking about the drive to change something that needs to be changed. And at its unhealthy extremes, uh, we're talking about frustration about an inwardly directed anger or about um, inappropriate anger that's directed at people or situations which are not actually the, the appropriate targets. They're not the problem that needs to be changed. They're not the thing which is uh, causing this emotion to arise, but the emotion of ang but the emotion is, is misdirected. And so it's striking out um, at the wrong targets. And so when this is threatened, when this energy, when this area, when this spirit is threatened, when this, this quiet joy in existence um, could be overwhelmed and pushes into depression or when the heart could be so full of emotion um, that it might not be able to respond appropriately to the outside world, these other energies will try and block off the attack on the heart. And so that voice that downplays the tragedy that, that we don't feel like we have the emotional resilience to cope with, that somewhere inside of us, we know we don't have the emotional resilience to cope with. Um, so we might experience something like the earth energy is trying to protect the fire. It's trying to block off access to the fire. And so it's, looking at um, looking at the tools at its disposal the earth is about caring about it's about caring for things um, and it's about um, 
It's about being there, being present and, um, and providing healthy boundaries. And the earth might decide that right now we can't have healthy boundaries. Um, there's no amount of boundary that's healthy here because I am so overwhelmed. I can't take something in. It's just going to throw up like building a wall of earth around the heart. And that wall is going to be made out of what the what emotions the earth has to work with. And so it might end up being um, getting obsessed about something and um, in order to prevent us dealing with the outside emotion. And if you've ever been really stressed about anything and taken refuge in obsessively sorting your email inbox or doing all of the laundry, then you felt something like that. But the, the earth also might go in the other direction and it might use, it might kind of switch off our ability to care about things. It tries to build a wall out of, out of um, that, that sense of, of not my problem. I don't care. Um, you know, you do what you want. You're not my responsibility. And then we might end up with this voice that's trying, that's telling us, you know, this, this isn't my problem. My problems are bigger. I don't have the capacity to cope with this. And so I'm trying to just prevent myself from having to take in this, this, uh, this level of emotion that I do not currently feel qualified to, to deal with. Um, and, and the, all of the other, all of the other energies might try and do their part. The, uh, the, the metal may try and, um, make us disvalue, discount the information we're bringing in that we're, that's, that's trying to come in. Um, the water may try and freeze our emotions. It may try and, um, it may try and throw up stories about, um, you know, worse things happen to me and, um, and kind of wall off our ability to listen and to absorb and to take in things from the outside, which is an ability of the water. Um, obviously, we could get angry at the person who's, um, you know, trying to force this, um, force us to carry this, this burden that we don't currently have the capacity to carry. Um, but in, in short, Anytime we're having an emotional reaction to something that's going on outside of ourselves that doesn't seem right, that doesn't seem healthy, that doesn't seem appropriate, it's not what we would want to do, that's an indication that we're not responding from a place of clarity, from a place of being able to take everything in, assess it appropriately, and react according to the circumstances. And one of the major reasons for that to happen is, is because of our, our needing to defend ourselves, our needing to protect ourselves. And so the first takeaway is even if you have that voice in your head that's saying horrible things about someone who's just lost their mom, who's trying to tell you the story, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're a bad person. Okay. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It means that right now you are overwhelmed. Right now you don't have the emotional capacity to deal with this and your, your body, your spirit, your mind, you, some parts of you are trying to defend you with the best tools they have available and those tools might suck um, because we don't all necessarily have all of the, excuse me, all of the emotional tools that, uh, that we would like um, and so my number one suggestion when you're dealing with that sort of situation is to try and take care of yourself, you know, try and say the appropriate thing when you're with the person. But if, if you have this voice, if you have this voice telling you, you know, don't do this, don't do that. Um, you can't take you, you can't deal with this right now is basically what the voice is trying to say, then that means you can't deal with this right now. And it means that, you know, try and be there for your friend in the moment. Don't say anything awful to them if you can help it. But right now, you are not the person who's able to be there as an emotional support for others because you've got something going on that you need, you need to be getting emotional support if, if this is how much you feel the need to protect yourself 
from anything from anything extra coming in and demanding your your attention and your emotional processing ability um and um in a in a not chinese but in a very similar vein i recently heard a psychologist say if you find yourself resenting something or someone that means there's something there you have to look at um and it might not be the person that you're resenting's fault it could be that you're being asked to give more than you have even if it's totally reasonable ask if you're in a very low place and you don't have um, and you don't have energy to share, you don't have attention to share, um, that resentment, that's another, I would, I would associate that with the, with the anger, with the wood energy, that, that, that resentment, um, uh, is, is another way that your body, that yourself, your spirit, um, in, Ch in Chinese medicine, we say body and we mean like the, the holistic unit that is a person that your body is trying to protect itself. Um, is trying to protect you, is trying to protect the spirit, um, and just trying to keep you safe. So, um, yeah. So when you're feeling emotionally overwhelmed, it's a sign that you need some care, that you need to take care of yourself, even better if someone else can take care of you. And the reason that I wanted to bring this up today, uh, that I moved this question up is, on uh, Friday night in my synagogue, um, a member of the community who has uh, friends in, in Ukraine was talking about uh, their situation there. And I found myself sitting and listening and getting completely numb. I, I was just, I just didn't have any emotional response, which doesn't seem ideal. Um, and then once the numbness passed, I found myself, uh, I found myself very, very triggered, I guess you could say. I, I, I was uh, hyped up on adrenaline and I realized that because I've lived through um, bombings, uh, I've lived through missiles falling on the city I lived in, that I, you know, it, it, it touched something inside of me that I haven't fully processed and therefore I wasn't able to to be emotionally open to hearing other people's stories about the same situation. Um, and so that's, that's a sign for me that I have things I need to work on. Um, but, you know, people react in all sorts of ways. You will react in all sorts of ways to emotional information coming at you, to demands made on your emotional processing. And if those, if the ways that you find yourself reacting aren't what you would want, then that's not, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It means that there's something that you need help with or that you need to process. Um, and you could say that, you know, we all maybe have a responsibility to do our best to process our emotional history so that we can be stronger and healthier and be able to be there for the people around us. But the, if, if you haven't made it through all of your historical emotional crap, that doesn't make you a bad person. And, and thinking that you're a bad person or thinking there's something wrong with you is not going to help you be um, more emotionally open and, and able to be more present for other people. Um, and that's not to say that you're a bad person. If you can't not think of yourself as a bad person, um, we are all messed up. We're all doing our best in a very hard world. And, you know, and we all need to give ourselves a break. And we probably all need to give the people around us a break. And so I just um, wish for everyone watching this that, you know, try and be easier on yourself, try and be easier on the people around you, try and assume that you're doing your best and that everyone else is doing their best. And sometimes our best sucks because we're human. Um, but yeah, they say in Hebrew, Dan it means when you have to make a judgment, uh, try and make, try, try and assume the best, try and assume that the other person is trying, try and assume that they meant something uh, positive, even if it came out wrong, um, because most of the time we'll be right. And it's a much better way to live life. And 
it, it calls forth the best from other people. So, um, may we all merit to see a time of peace, prosperity, and health. And I'll see you next week. Bye.